Well, welcome back. We have a key member of South Dakota's delegation in Washington here with us in studio tonight. Congressman Dusty Johnson taking time from his busy schedule to be with us and talk on some key issues. Let's talk about affordable housing. It is becoming increasingly scarce in parts of South Dakota, Sioux Falls too. Um, in your opinion, how do we address this at the national level and provide some relief for low-income, middle-income families? The place people want to go just makes things worse. There's, there's a certain uh, sense out there that we just need to dump more money on this problem. And D.C., boy, I'll tell you what, uh, it seems like in D.C. all too often we just want to dump more money into a problem. But what we know is that if you don't have people who can go out and build those, those new houses, those new, new apartments, more money is just going to make everything more expensive. Right. And so what we really got to do is we got to get people off the sidelines. You know, we still have more than a million uh, American uh, workers between the ages of 25 and 45 who could be working but who are not on the sidelines. We got to make sure, and I've been a champion for this, we got to make sure that if we are giving people uh, a welfare check, if they're young, if they're able-bodied, if they can work, they should be working. And that doesn't mean on day one they'll be able to hang drywall or help pour a basement, but that's what is really going to help. If we want the prices of housing to come down, we got to make it easier for people to build houses. And I would just close by saying this. There's been one estimate that federal regulations in the housing arena adds fifteen or $20,000 to the price of a house. Some of those regulations, of course, we have to have. Others of them are not necessary. If we would just right-size those regulations, we would absolutely make housing more affordable. Interesting approach. Well, you've also proposed a bill mm -hmm. that is aimed at improving patient care for tribal communities, yeah. the Restoring Accountability in Indian Health Service Act. What are the, some of the key takes, takeaways from this legislation, and how would you say that this helps communities here in the state? Yeah, we know that obviously a lot of South Dakotans rely on the Indian Health Service mm -hmm. for their health care. And there are a lot of good providers, people who really care. There are also crooks. There are bad providers who have hurt people in other states who then have moved here and have gotten hired by IHS because IHS didn't do their homework. And so my bill makes it very clear. We need to reward the good actors within IHS and we need to punish the bad actors. Mm -hmm. We need to do, do our homework. If we're going to hire somebody, to come uh, provide what should be life-saving uh, you know, help to somebody, that we, we have to make sure that they have not been kicked out of another state because they are a bad doctor, a bad nurse, or a bad uh, advanced practice professional. And this is a question that we have asked other members of South Dakota's delegation. What is the biggest issue in your mind facing the United States right now? What is at the top of the list for you, and how do you address it? I was at the State Fair four days over the course of last week, and I would tell you people still are, are frustrated with urban crime, which is a problem. They are still frustrated with the border, which continues to be an absolute disaster. And of course, they're frustrated with inflation. These are, it does not have to be this way. I mean, one of the reasons that I voted 71 times for stronger border security, and I voted against $13 trillion in spending, is that there is a better way forward. And so I know we're in the silly season right now. We're obviously coming up on an election. My hope is that we can try to find a way to move forward to put back into place the Remain in Mexico policy that we know works at the southern border, and we can try to right-size some of this governmental spending because it has been government spending trillion dollars after trillion dollars that has triggered this inflation. A lot of work to be done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank yeah. you for taking the time out and visiting with us this afternoon. Thank you. Have a good one.